Hello, welcome to Adapt and Close today. I just want to do some quick cardiology, pharmacology, and then talk about extravasation. The first one we'll talk about is amiodarone. Amiodarone is very important medication. Unfortunately, it has a lot of side effects. It slows down the heart. It's anti against arrhythmic. Arrhythmia means the heart is going faster. So if it makes then you should know that it's going to slow down the heart. Just put tachyarrhythmia. Um, every tachyarrhythmia, you can use this one to take care of it. Okay. Why am I talking about it? It's P clone. That's the way I call it, P clone. Um, there's a DEA, you can see it, um, but it's P cloned. Um, and those are a side effect. What does the P stand for? Well, the first P is his number one. This is number one side effect of amiodarone. Pulmonary, okay, pulmonary fibrosis. And this is number one. If you don't know anything about, at all, amiodarone causes pulmonary fibrosis. And how does it prevent? Dry cough, um, chest pain, periodic chest pain, dyspnea and exertion and that's how the patient will complain they they be on this medication for a long time and started having these symptoms you should be worried about um fibrosis from amiodarone the c is the cardiac so i told you what it does okay cardiac it slow down the heart rate so bradycardia okay and when you continue to slow down the heart rate while well, you prolong QT, most medication that slow down the heart, it takes a long time, it prolong QT. Guess what? When you have a long prolonged QT, it calls to sad. The pontes. This is usually treated with magnesium. So you see how powerful this medication is. So you got to be careful. You got to know all its side effects. Then the L is the liver. Liver toxicity, so liver toxicity. We don't say don't use it, but you have to know that it's going to cause liver toxicity, cardiac toxicity, pulmonary fibrosis. It's affecting almost every organ in your body. And um, the O, you can see, you can guess what the O is. It's ocular, so or optic neuropathy, okay? And then the neuro, it, 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 you can also guess it's a neurological problem, so peripheral neuropathy. The E is endocrine, so it causes endocrine. So it increases, it can either causes hypothyroidism, so hypo or hyper thyroid problem. So um, the TSH will go up or TSH, either up or down. And the last one is the D. I can, it doesn't show up. So P cloned, um, it causes dermatitis. And the, the specific dermatitis is a blue, they have like blue, gray skin lesions. So the easy way to remember it the easy way to remember them is P. I put a P there. So P, you put a P, P clone. P clone. Amiodarone, the pulmonary fibrosis will be cloned. Okay. That means if you get pulmonary fibrosis, you're dead. It's irreversible. Irreversible symptoms. If you get pulmonary fibrosis, we have to clone you. That is the way I remember amiodarone, P clone. Pulmonary fibrosis means we need to clone you because you're going to die. Therefore, what do you think the examiner is going to ask you? This is classic symptoms. This is what? Who do you see first? Well, guess what? If I'm an examiner, I'm going to ask you this because this is the number one side effect followed by cardiac then liver, but it can affect almost every system. So if you see a patient on amiodarone and he has dry cough, deep sneer and exertion, and chest pain, 
they are not in CHF. They have what we call um, pulmonary and uh, fibrosis. Like the, the lung is getting like, you know how fibrosis is like scar tissue throughout the lung, like cirrhosis. That's what is happening to the lung. And it is deadly. And we cannot reverse it. It's irreversible problem. Okay, it's irreversible problem here. So just know this side effect, amiodarone, you use it in ACLs, um, easy medication, we have it everywhere. Um, it's used for um, cold, anti rim And so you have to be careful with that. Um, you can you got to be careful and know the side effects and it's P clone. The next medication we're going to talk about is this no epinephrine, epinephrine. They are what we call vasopressors. So they are vasopressors. We also use them in code. So the vasopressors, based on the name, they pressed the vasculature. So they are vasoconstrictors. That's what it means. Anything that could be vessel constrict, the vessel climbing down, blood pressure goes up, heart rate goes up. Okay. And, and they, they're going to increase your cardiac output. One thing you have to know anybody on the vessel pressure, so beta one, beta two, agonist, that was usually the receptors they're going to act on. So B1, B2 um, receptors. Okay. That's why it increases your heart rate, blood pressure, and cardiac output. They also cause this problem, hyperglycemia. That's why any patient on abudro, which is a beta-2 agonist, can increase your glucose, hyperglycemia. So you got to watch it. Make sure um, you, you know about it. If they, if they are diabetic, you put them on, they on vasopressin, your sugar goes up. But one thing about this medication you have to know is when you give it to the patient, it's going to direct blood to the most important organ, especially your vessels. It's climbing down so that blood goes to your brain and your heart. We use, we use it in septic shock in order to improve per, perfusion of the brain and the heart. So your extremities, which is not important, your gut, which is not important, and maybe your kidney, it just directs all the blood to your heart in your brain such that less blood go to your leg. Guess what? If you constrict the vessel, there's no blood going to your leg. What do you think is going to happen? Where well, your feet is going to get cold. If your feet is cold, um, no blood, you have gangrenes, okay, gangrenes. Um, and then if no fluid, no blood going to your kidney, your urine output go down. And so if you see ulcers and blue toe, or black, blue, black toes in this patient is okay because they are in vasopressor, that is expected. So if I give you uh, this side effects, you can know that this is an expected finding. I'm looking for something bad. Is heart rate so high, blood pressure is so high. Those are the one you have to be sharp about. The blue toe, those things are consistent with what the medication does. So just, um, Pay attention to that specific information. These medications too, they, they cause a certain problem, okay? They are what we call vesicants. Vesicants, okay, they are vesicants. You run through a peripheral IV. When you run them through, you, you can, but you have to be careful. A vesicant is very thick. Um, it can cause extra vesication into the tissue of the blood, a tissue of the skin. And when you get into the tissue of the skin, it causes skin necrosis, okay? So these medications, we try to run them through central venous line. Of course, if you have low level dose, you can run them through peripheral line. Like vancomycin is a vesicant. We run it through peripheral line, but you have to be extra careful. If the patient start complaining of pain, okay? at the IV site, okay? They start complaining of pain at the IV site. You see some redness, some swelling, 
and the key is blanching. If you see this patient, this is not infiltration. This is extra visation. And so you got to be extra careful. Guess what? These medications, they are vasoconstrictors. Therefore, if they get into this tissue in your extremities, they're going to do their function. What are they going to do? Cut blood supply to the that area. And they cause this what? Skin necrosis. Okay, skin necrosis. That is what you want to prevent. If this happens, this is a um, sentinel event. You got to report it. It's reportable. Report it to the, um, basically you have to report it as a documentation that this is what happened. Charge nurses need to know because the patient who have what we call skin necrosis. What would you do if this happened as the nurse? Patient had uh, extravasation. He's getting epinephrine or no epinephrine. What would be your first thing? Whenever somebody is getting infusion and they're having complication with it, you stop the infusion. But this is different. You stop the infusion. The infusion is, is not in the vein. It has infiltrated into the soft tissue. That means the subcutaneous area. So you take a syringe, okay? And then you aspirate, okay? You aspirate the, the fluid in under the skin. And as you aspirate, you pull the line together. So you put it to the IV port and you aspirate the content under the skin. Because it has infiltrated, the IV is no more in the vein. It's in the subcutaneous tissue. So you put a um, C, um, an 30 cc gauge or 10 cc gauge at the hub and pull whatever fluid is there. And as you pull, you remove the IV. Don't just pull the IV right away without removing, okay? And then um, you let them elevate, at least prevent edema, okay? Edema, so they, you can let them elevate or put some ice on it to let them elevate it before you call the doctor. Don't call the doctor when this is happening right away. Because when you do that, then there's necrosis already started. So you better prevent the process by stopping the infusion, aspirating the content, let raise the leg, call the doctor. Then you have to prevent, you have to be proactive to prevent um, the necrosis. So you have to ask for a medication that will counteract these no epinephrine and epinephrine, and it's called fentolamine. So this is a vasodilator, okay? Um, it, it help with the, um, prevent the constriction effect of this medication. It allow blood flow, and then it prevent future um, necrosis. So this medication is very important. You have to know. Anybody who had um, visicant, uh, extravasation, especially if it's not if it's a person, not every visican, no epinephrine and epinephrine, that's what you do. And then uh, finally, dopamine. Dopamine is also a pressure, but it's notoriously a little bit different. It's not a stronger one. It's tried to be a pressure, but it's not. We use it in early stage of sepsis, um, because it has a renal effect. Okay, the low dose, low dose is good for your kidney. So it's good for your kidney. So it's, that's why people use it to improve your blood flow when you're septic. But it does the same thing. It acts on um, the receptors, they acts on a couple of dopamine receptors, but which have the same tachyarrhythmic effect. It also increase your heart rate, increase your blood pressure and cardiac output. So you should expect that. The side effect with tachycardia, patient heart rate is like 150, 160, then um, you stop those medications, but they're very important. So when you see this in your questions, just don't, don't worry about it. They are precious. Dopamine, no epinephrine, epinephrine. Think about them, put them in the same box, vasopressors. 
vasopressors. It's going to push on the vein, at the artery, constrict them, prevent blood flow from those extremities, allow blood to go into vital organs, and then they increase your heart rate, they increase your blood pressure, your cardiac output. And therefore, when I give somebody dopamine, I expect his heart rate to be high. It's an expected finding. But if the heart rate goes too high, I have to do something about it. That means you're thinking, you're being sharp about it. If he, you have extravasation for this treatment, is the same as the process, which again, and you ask for fentolamine to help with the um, um to help with the the necrosis that will repair. Okay. So those are the three medications you have to know: dopamine, no epinephrine, epinephrine. The most important that I want to know is amiodarone. Okay, amiodarone, which causes P clone. Pulmonary fibrosis is number one, and they have what? Dry cough, dyspnea is exertion, and the chest pain. And that patient has irreversible problem. You can fix it, and therefore any poor patient on amiodarone, you gotta be careful. Thank you for listening. Take care of yourself. Keep charging, and all the best of luck. Subscribe to my channel and get more um commonly tested content daily as I promise. Take care of yourself.